Hello, my name is Chandler Oppenheimer. I'm a third year graduate student in sound and digital media design here at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. In the spring of 2019, I was a sound designer in the Clarence Brown Theater's production of Detroit 67. Before I continue, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking here from Knoxville, Tennessee, the native lands of the Uchi and Muscogee Creek people, as well as the Cherokee nations. I would like to also acknowledge the indigenous stewards of this land, both past and present. The main sound design in Detroit 67 that I drew myself into was representing these two different worlds. Um, during the, this historical time in Detroit, uh, so there's a world on stage of the family, and that's through like a lot of the music and a lot of the interactions they have with each other. And that's from an audience standpoint, that sounds like it comes from the stage itself, as well as uh, in the outside world around them. And that is reflected to the audience from surround speakers behind them. And that depicted a lot of the protests and violence that was going on in Detroit in the summer of 1967. And over the course of the show, as it, as the riots and the protests uh, grow, grow and grow every day as we go through each scene in the show, that outside world slowly and continues to encroach and encapsulate uh, the, their world inside. And that was a big direction with the sound design I chose to focus on. One of the fun tools I got to use on this show as a sound designer was the use of practical speakers. They help provide a directionality on set to help the, make the world sound more realistic to the audience. Um, one of these was the record player that Shell would play records on. Below the in the cabinet, we would have a really nice speaker and we timed it with sound cues that whenever she would play a vinyl, we'd have music playing. And through audio magic, it would sound crackly like a record. Another one of these speakers was the 8-track speakers that Sly and Link would bring down. Uh, that also provided another sense of directionality on another side of the set. Uh, the really interesting thing about these speakers, we had to train the actors how to plug them in so we can get them to play music throughout the show whenever they would play an 8-track. Another one of these speakers was a Stereofax speaker that was on the set upstairs that the audience didn't see and that provided a sound source of the upstairs world of the house. And a lot of times it would be a screen door whenever characters would enter the home. Music plays a very important role in the show as it's used a lot to express a lot of the emotions of the characters. Uh, many of us grew up knowing a lot of Motown hits, but as a sound designer, I had to do a lot more research into understanding what Motown music means to this culture and to this show. Um, in the show specifically, the playwright outlines a lot of specific music and songs to be played at certain moments that helps express a lot of the emotional turmoil, the, the relationships between characters, and just how characters express themselves. And with those moments, lyrically, you start realizing how much this music means to these people, especially during this time. It was a great opportunity to work with this design team to allow us to practice what we learned in the classroom and apply it on a professional environment. Um, and I would love to see BIPOC representation and design teams to hear their voices and future stories here at the Clarence Brown Theater. Thank you for listening.